What's up guys, Spencer here. Today, we're gonna to be going over how to apply cross-validation with our given model, ElasticNet, which we have actually done in a previous video. And I'll make sure that I uh, include the link down into the description. But in this video, we're gonna be going over how to improve our model performance using cross-validation and how to make our model more robust and compare our new model with our previous models in terms of overall performance. So let's get right down to it. In the previous videos, we went over how to compute linear regression, lasso regression, ridge regression, and elastic net regression. So I encourage you to really check out those videos before we proceed, uh, because we're gonna be building upon what we already accumulated and compare our new results to our previous results. I'll make sure I include that in the description down below. Now, let's get into how we're going to improve our overall model performance. Um, I re-ran everything inside of our elastic net regression so that we could compute our statistics uh, related, part particularly in the root mean squared error and the model name, elastic, lasso, linear, and ridge, and the R corresponding R squared values that we have over here. And notice that they are all very similar in terms of uh, the related fields, such as R squared, they're about uh, 0.65. So 65% of the variance is explained from each of these models. And there's a root mean squared error of about 5.7 roughly. So let's pull up a new sheet. Let's clear our workspace. Make sure that you set your working directory to the Boston data set, uh, wherever that data set is inside of your local computer. So make sure it's pointed to, pointing to that particular file structure. I obtained the data from uh, Toronto EDU and that's just the link attached. And now let's get right down to it. So first we need the following library uh, libraries to install. So I'm using a very popular uh, machine learning libraries to install. I am uh, using a very popular machine learning library in R. It's very similar to scikit-learn in Python, but in this case for R it's called carrots. Carrots. It will take a while for you to download this, but once it has been downloaded using the install that packages, install that packages, uh, I mean just having carrots, um, it will show you or it will provide you an entire like database of different types of models that you can use and so let's take a look into that so taking a look into carrots um, there's i'll just set this as a variable a and then get model info this is a function within carrot that provides the metadata on what the, uh, what carrot entails so a dollar sign with all of the specific features that are in here. These features being different types of models that you can use. You can use, uh, I don't recognize, oh yeah, a gradient boost modeling, uh, GLM, which we'll be using in this video, GLM nets, um, we'll actually be using that in this video, GLM step, um, lots of different models you can use linear models so this is basically like an umbrella on different types of models that you could utilize across the wide universe of r packages and carrot applies all these different packages under the same roof and applies its additional features to each of these models to compute various statistics or compute various tuning parameters and like you name it carrot is very very useful in terms of whatever you would want to do. So I recommend that you take a look at each of these models on your own time. Um, but th uh, this overall package is a great, great package to start your machine learning journey. And to top it off in terms of what care could provide, they actually provide you the code. So we are going to be using like a GLM net uh, function. And when we go into this, they provide you what type of functions are applicable inside of this function. So you can apply various different types of functions on your given model or and determine what uh, type of values you want to extract. So they provide you all the code and what that looks like and what type of code that is related to carrots and what's related to the GLLMNet library. They even tell you what library it came from and what type of um, outputs that you can have 
and all that sorts. So this is really, really great. It's a very nice package. It's very lovely. Um, note that Carrot is only a CPU involved. It's there's no real, not really a GPU involved base. You would have to get a specialized package for that. And there are many GPU packages out there, but in terms of the Carrot world, everything is CPU based. So please make a note of that. Um, but anyways, let's get out of this. Um, when we take well, yeah so we're done taking a look at carrot so after this let's set a result uh set a result um uh, like a seed or something like that yeah set result seed set dot seed uh we can just do one uh, when we set the seed this just helps out uh to make uh following along a little bit easier uh, so that we actually have the same results on different types of computers this just randomly generates different numbers that we can utilize when we're separating out our data so let's load our data um i'll just call this data yeah read.csv wherever your boston data set is my boston data set is called boston.housing and let's take a look at that so let's do like a string of data a string of data and in the previous videos, we went into a little bit more in depth on what type of uh, features there are and what type of data that we are working with. This is data. So in the previous videos, we went over what the data set entailed. So in this video, I'm not really going to go into depth on what type of data we are working with. Uh, but I guess like in terms of very high level, we're just going to be utilizing these specific models to predict this feature that we have going on over here. And we are going to use all these other variables to predict uh, this particular feature. So we're going to have some of a, reg of a regression model that we'll be utilizing. And then we can just do a real quick summary on this data. Um, of course, there's NAs. We need to remove that. Otherwise, our regression modeling won't work. There are some models that will accept uh, NAs. But in this case, the Y variables related to elastic net. Um, the the actual equation that's involved does not accept any NAs in the back end. So we're just going to omit, uh, it's like NA, we're just going to get rid of the um, NAs within the data. Let's do another quick summary. What that looks like, summary of data. Voila, it is removed. Next thing that we're going to do is to make sure that our data is scaled. And I've already written some pre code over here, but I'm going to do this, data scaled. We're going to be combining our data, um, our data here. And I did this in a previous video and I just got that code. But I'm essentially getting the data, getting the first 13 columns, I scale that and just append the Y values since we want, we don't necessarily need to scale the Y values uh, so that we can have a more standardized output. At least that's how I did it in the previous video. So let's run this data scaled and let's do a string, take a real quick look at what that looks like. 452 variables, I mean observations with 14 variables. Let's also change the name there. So that'll be whole names, data scaled, underscore data scaled. And that should be med v. Run that. Awesome. Sweet. Now that has been done. Let's do a real quick string. Oh no. Oh, oh, oops, oops. <laughs> 14. Uh, let's rerun everything here. Uh, let's also set that scene again. Bam. Okay, let's do that again. String data scaled. There you go. So nothing, yeah, not everything's melted out and everything has been scaled. So we are good to go on the next part. When the next part is setting the training control variables or values. This is a this is going to be a function that caret requires in its overall function that we'll be using. So let's call this train parameters, and we are be using the function train control. And notice here that it says the default is boot, which stands for bootstrap. That's just a different sampling uh, say sampling method that we could use, but in this case, we're just gonna be sticking with our cross-validation format, CV. And so since our data is only about 452 values, we're only gonna be folding 
a, a little bit uh, because our data is not that vast and if we keep on increasing the k folds we're going to have some severe overfitting um, so let's just do um, number number of times that's the um, parameter name and we we're going to be splitting it by four four times so that we have close to a hundred observations that we'll be working with uh, with our overall overall set especially since we're going to be splitting this into an 80-20 so let's do that real quick split into 80-20 sets this carrot has all of the machine learning functions that you pretty much need or not really need but it makes it easier to separate your data uh, they have a real neat function called create data partition where this separates your data close to whatever format you would want um, you would have to put in your uh, some um, some feature where it just retrieves the index and it randomizes on that index um, for like an 80 20 set so it actually only gets it it only gets your p val p number or p times your number of values in terms of the indexes it only gets that number and it uh, randomly selects the numbers in between those particular ranges it'll make more sense later on i'll show you that real quick let's set the list to false because we don't need that to be false and let us get that times equal to one so we can only do it one time through take a real quick look at what train index looks like so as i was noting prior uh, we have uh, all of our indices that have been randomly selected notice that they are not in sequential order like one two three but they are three four five six seven eight nine ten uh eleven there's no 12 here but that's because it randomly selected this number of observations on what we have over here so the way that we're going to be utilizing this index is that we're going to be using this to split our training and our testing set and that will look something like this we have our train or let's call this data train we're going to be calling our data scaled data scaled and we're going to be utilizing the train index right here and that's going to be all of our rows our data test here is going to look like this where we have the dash mark of train index and what the dash mark is is essentially choosing all the numbers that currently do not uh, well it's choosing all the numbers that do not exist within the range that we have going on over here um, so yeah that's how that will do it so we have our data train and our data test and that looks like this 88 observations for test 364 observations for train and let's add that up real quick 364 452 so we successfully split our data into a near estimate of an 80-20. Notice that 80% uh, of 452 is not exactly 364. I'm not entire, entirely sure on how caret uh, computes its um, its uh, separation via the p like some like your split, but it's close enough. Uh, it's very close to 0.8. So once we have our data trained and our data test, we can finally utilize the cross-validation technique that Carrot has. So let's call this elastic net cross-validation. It's called zero uh, train. We're going to be using the same syntax as that of the linear model with the tilde and all that. Y tilde x values, where the period represents all the x values. We're going to be calling the data train because that is where we're going to be calling that that's where the data is going to be referenced to the method since we're going to be using the I should put that in quotes since we're going to be using um, elastic net uh, we're going to be using the function glm net or the library glm net and caret knows what type of method to use for the glm net and in this case glm net represents elastic net our train control we are going to be using the value that we created the train parameters and we inputting that to here and that is all you really need so let's run this took less than a second now let's take a look at this awesome sweet so notice that we have three values that are the same 
Uh, this is just the default um, default values that um, the alpha values will be inputted into the overall caret function. Uh, and we will have a different lambda values for each of these alpha values that we are going to have. It gives you a certain RMSE and your R squared values and the mean absolute error. And it also provides you what the best model in terms of the RMSE. That's what's the criteria that the overall model will use. And it'll just significantly, well, it'll just point it out on what your significant um, most significant observation will be like. So now that we have that, let's compare these values to what we have prior in our previous videos. So notice that our R squared values for our, our best one, our best model, which is right here, let me highlight that. R squared value is 0.72. That is like leagues better. It's like almost 7% better than all of our other R squared values. So our observations or our cross-validation has explained an additional 7% variance within our overall scope. Also, look at our RMSE, 4.78 compared to 5.7. It's, mag it's magnitude better. Cross-validation is crucial to make your, in making your overall uh, data like just more robust. It's very great, very good. Hey guys, I hope that you enjoyed this part in terms of hyper-tuning our overall model using cross-validation. In the next video, we're going to figure out how to make our model even better utilizing cross-validation in different formats and how we can utilize different methods to make our overall model more robust for new incoming data. Awesome. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.